One of the most important things to learn while surf fishing is where to cast your baits to catch fish. The very first thing I do when arriving at the beach is scanning the surf. I'm looking for crashing waves as this is the first indication of structure. Waves build up over deep areas of water and break over shallow structure like sandbars. Sandbars are important to locate as they set the framework for the surf. The area between sandbars are called troughs or guts and are literally roadways for the fish. Troughs provide access to small food sources close to shore while also providing some cover from birds and sharks. Next, I'm looking for hot spots like cuts, holes, and rip currents as these areas are often the prime feeding zones. Cuts are breaks in sandbars that allow fish to move between troughs and to open water to ambush bait. Holes are deep pockets of water indicated by a darker color. These pockets offer the most protection for fish while they're eating so you can guarantee fish will gravitate to these spots. Rip currents are the mechanism at the beach that returns the water that just crashed onto the shore back to where it came from. Rip currents also drag small crustaceans like sand fleas, coquina clams, and shrimp out to deeper zones. And then one of the last things you look for is points. Simply put, points are areas of the beach that jut out into the water and create funnels between shore and the first sandbar. Now that we have figured out where all potential structures are located, we can now begin placing baits strategically. If you're new to surf fishing and still haven't figured out how to read the beach, then I recommend casting out shallow, medium, and then as far as you can. Move your rods to the depth where the fish are feeding. This strategy is called zone awareness and is very effective for locating the fish. If you are able to read the beach, then cast your first bait to a cut, hole, or rip current, or better yet, structure that is adjacent to a rip current. Cast your second bait in the deepest area of the first or second trough, depending how deep the troughs are and how far out the second trough is. Cast your third bait close to shore in the deepest area you can find. Oftentimes, whiting will cluster in small holes very close to shore and can be caught back to back on the same little piece of bait. Some factors that may affect success in these zones are tides, wind, and water clarity. My recommendation is to fish when time allows, but if you do have the luxury of choosing times, then go during a rising or falling tide as water movement will push fish in to feed. Experienced surf anglers also like some wind to get that water moving and to provide cover from flying predators. Dirty water is one of the worst conditions for surf fishing as it can both reduce the salinity and scare away sight feeding fish like pompano. Do yourself a favor and do some pre-trip planning. Apps like Tides Near Me, Wind Finder, and Wind Alert will be helpful to predict what conditions will be. And to confirm your readings, go look at local beach cams to determine wind and water clarity. You now have what you need. Get out there and make it happen.